desk of Lady Ada brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. And Lady Ada, Lady Ada, you use your engineering powers every single week to find things on DigiKey. What is the great search this week? Okay, this week we got this paper shoot camera that we just did a little bit of a teardown on. And uh, I really like this four position switch. I'm, I'm a huge fan of slide switches. I really think uh, they're super awesome. I mean, I like buttons. Tactile buttons are good. Uh, but, you know, if you're not doing tactile buttons, I really like slide switches. They're easy to understand. They're, they're, you know, you can use them even if you aren't looking at something by feel, which I really like. So they're good for accessibility. Um, they last a long time, you know, you know, for the most part, unless they get wet, but you can still get weatherproof ones. Um, they're good for power. They're good for signal. They're good for everything. So, you know, on the on the LED glasses design here. I've got, uh, this is a slide switch that I use for on off. So you can uh, turn the whole thing on and off pretty easily with the slide switch. Um, there's also buttons of course to do reset, but slide switches are where it's at in my opinion. And um, I've used, you know, single pull, single throw switches, which are kind of where I usually use tactile buttons. Uh, Single pull double throw, which is an on off. Single pull uh, triple throw for like three modes. But then this was, this was a fabulous single pull four throw. And I thought like, let's, let's check that out uh, because uh, this could be useful for other people. And I like that it's a through hole switch. You could easily add it to a design to add a uh, four elements of selection. So let's go to uh, the computer. And I actually wanted to show real fast um, different switch uh, uh, schematics and what, what they mean. So this is, you know, I, I always get confused with what's the pull and what's the throw. So if you don't remember which is which, don't worry. I, I've been doing this for 20 years. I still can't remember. Um, but the most common thing is, you know, a single pull, single throw, which is like a, usually a tactile button. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just a, you, you, press, you, you press it to turn it on. There's a single pull double throw, SPDT, which means there's a, uh, there's a single thing and it can go between, it can throw between two options. So that's usually an on off switch. Um, there is the uh, single pull triple throw. So again, three options. And then I'll note something that it always, you know, doesn't trick me up, but can trick other people up. Um, I'll go to this image and make it nice and large. So the, Single pull, single throw is SPST and then SPDT. And then you'll also often see DPDT. That's the dual uh, pull, dual throw. Um, I, I see these often because surface mount slide switches to, for mechanical strength, they often have two separate switches. It's also good, um, the double pull, double throw, if you want to. I like these switches when it's like, oh, I want to switch I squared C or UART connections. You want to switch like a, a, a simple two wire bus from one set of pins to another or from controller to peripheral. Um, I like the SBDT or DPDT. I use those often on our shields, like for GPS modules, where it's like, oh, do you want to use UART on the soft serial or the hardware serial? One switch switches both pins over between two sets. But then when you get to SP3T and above, you don't use T, but use S for single, D for dual, but when you get to three or four, you use the number. So just remember that. Don't S P T T does not exist. There's no T for three. You actually use the, the number three. So, you know, it's good to know when you want to um, search for it because when you go to DigiKey, uh, you know, you can search for S P S T, and you'll get all sorts of like toggle switches and stuff. Um, then S P D T also totally awesome. Lots of different options. Relays also you can get them in S P D T type. But if you want to do, um, you know, four throw, it's not SPFT, which sounds like something you put on your skin to <laughs> avoid getting burnt. You actually want to do SP4T. So SP4T actually will get you, you know, the thing you want. And I think you can get 5T, but I, I, 4T is kind of maxed out. You know, DT and 3T are kind of not too uncommon, but 4T is quite rare. Um, in fact, it's so rare that there's only 31 options in slide switches. There's also um, RF switches, you know, there's the soft switches. So th that, that philosophy of like, oh, if there's a throw and a pull, the, the throw and the pull might be completely software implemented. 
um, which is what you'll get with RF switches and stuff. Um, but for uh, slide switches, oh, toggle switches also, you know, those are, you can use those, but they tend to stick out a bit. Not as easy to implement in a design. Uh, for slide switches, um, yeah, there's not that many, you know. I mean, they do look kind of like what we want, but there's not a ton. Uh, that said, let's only look at the ones that are in stock and active, which cuts it down to only eight options. Really not that many. Um, but all these look pretty good. Uh, this one I thought was like really compact, you know, surprisingly so. This looks very slim. So I don't really want this one. And this one is a right angle. Um, one thing to note when you're programming these, when you're, when you're putting these into your design, really look at the data sheet very carefully because it's not like the, there's sometimes two pins, even though it's a single pole, sometimes there's two pins for the mechanic, like for the mechanical layout. Sometimes there's two poles and sometimes, um, they're not in the order that you think it is like the leftmost switch is not the leftmost pin or whatever. So just really read the data sheet and, and maybe use a multimeter when you get the part to really make sure you're mapping it correctly. Um, but these all look pretty good. There's like a bunch of right angle ones. Uh, you know, there are our voltage ratings. If you're using these for power switches, check out the voltage rating and the current ratings. You know, you can get, you know, you can get switches that are high current, high voltage, but uh, what I like to do is if, if I really like a switch, you know, you have to switch power, I'll connect it through to a transistor and then the transistor does the, the switching itself. But that said, the one that I kind of like the most, you know, there's, there's inexpensive ones. This one's the cheapest. This one's, you know, 45 cents um, per, it's a right angle style. And I do like that it has the two mechanical connects on the side, um, but for, style and looks and also um number of parts in stock the this one the apem one i mean it has forty-seven thousand pieces in stock which is always kind of promising i like that <laughs> and uh i mean like it gets a lot and then they do have the uh the 3d um rendering of this so if you're interested in like what does this what does this look like i like it has a nice sticky outy part the um the actuator sticks up quite a bit. It looks like it's easy to solder into place. You know, it is open, so you just have to make sure that it's, uh, keep it dust proof, but otherwise, looks like a good switch, you know, not too bad, a dollar or so, and then uh, can do up to 300 milliamps at 125 volts. So you could use this as your power switch. You don't need to have any extra circuitry, or you can use it as signal if you like, either one. But a nice switch, SP4T. Good for you when you're making a camera with four different filters. And that's the great church.